We lost two heroes on June 21st, and we need to respect their memories and their loved ones. Officer Beasley was responding to a call in the area of Old Town, Arvada, and within seconds, he was brutally ambushed and murdered by someone who expressed hatred for police officers. One thing that became evident throughout our review was that John Hurley that day acted as a hero. Had he survived, we would have praised his, his bravery in engaging a mass shooter before anyone else was killed. He acted defend to defend others, and we will remember him for his selflessness. The threat to our officers and our community was stopped by a hero named Johnny Hurley. Johnny's actions can only be described as decisive, courageous, and effective in stopping for the loss of life. What happened next is equally tragic. A responding Arvada officer encountered Mr. Hurley, who was holding a rifle, and our officer shot him. Our police department and community's view of Mr. Hurley and his actions are heroic. It is clear that Mr. Hurley intervened in an active shooting that unfolded quickly in a busy commercial area in the middle of the day, and he did so without hesitation. Mr. Hurley's actions saved others from serious injury or death. It was June 21st, 2021. On this day, there was a foiled mass shooting that should have gotten round the clock national attention and coverage, but you'll soon understand why it didn't. The shooter, Ronald Troika, had already had a troubled history with the Arvada Police Department in Colorado. After a series of personal problems, he grew increasingly isolated and agitated. He became extremely angry with the police. According to court documents, he was constantly binge watching what they termed anti-police videos. Other than watching these videos, it doesn't take much of an imagination to understand why anybody would have a problem with police in any area. Just a couple weeks before the shooting, Troika confronted Officer Craig Brownlow, Sterling Boom, and Michael Hall. Now keep these three officers in mind as we move through this incident. Their action, or rather lack of action, is the centerpiece of this story. Court records revealed that Troika called them, quote, terrible people and sovereign citizens. The day of the shooting, Troika told his sister the police weren't taking him seriously, so his sister called APD and asked for a welfare check. She noted that he had a lot of weapons at his disposal. The officer who tried to perform that check was Gordon Beasley. Beasley knocked on his door, but Troika had already taken off for Old Town. Later that day, as Officer Gordon Beasley was making his way through the alley in Old Town, Troika pulled up and parked his truck. He exited his truck wearing dark blue shorts, a black shirt, a floppy hat, tactical gear, and a long rifle. He then began running after Beasley. At the same time, Mark Wise in the white shirt here and a colleague were leaving a restaurant in the town square and were walking in the opposite direction of Beasley. After they passed Beasley, they noticed a guy with a long rifle also passing them. Troika stopped and yelled to Beasley, who then turned around. That's when Troika raised his weapon and ended Gordon Beasley's life. And this is the testimony of Mark Wise. As I was leaving the restaurant with my colleague, we both began walking towards and then intended to walk down the alley to my parked car because uh, we were going to my car first just based on where hers was parked. As we were walking down the alley or towards the alley, we first saw a police officer on patrol, foot patrol walk by us. We then next saw an individual come out of the line of diagonally parked cars, dressed in all black, weapon in hand. Weapon was leveled at a concerning position. Eyes were certainly on that individual whom I will refer to as Shooter. As he walked past the two of us, the Shooter then shouted, hey, very loudly, and caused us to turn around to see what Shooter was wanting attention for. The police officer begins to turn around also to see what attention was being called to. 
Officer never fully makes it turned around before shooter opens fire. Fire shots, hits officer, officer drops down. At that point, for that particular piece of this overall episode, I turned back around fearing for my own safety and dove into a, the line of parked cars right there. According to investigative documents, three Arvada officers in the nearby substation, remember the three that had a run in with Troika, dressed in shorts and polo shirts, were worried they weren't wearing the right gear to safely face Troika. Instead, they watched the man with the AR-15 from the window as he walked toward the main square of Old Town. After ending Beasley's life, Troika went back to his truck to get what looks to be another gun. At this time, John Hurley was shopping at an army surplus store a block over and peered out the window. Spotting the shooter, he ran out of the store toward the gunshots and removed his concealed gun at his waist beneath his shirt. Hurley had trained for active shooter situations, not because it was part of his work, but because he wanted to help people and save lives should the situation arise. Crouching down, he ran across a vacant, shady plaza with umbrellas and tables with his firearm pointed toward the ground. Hurley hid behind a brick wall and patiently watched the shooter. He took aim and fired six rounds from his handgun. According to a report, five rounds struck the gunman. A year later, Hurley's mother said, quote, I have to admit, it's kind of exciting to see the way he handled himself, the way he took all the training and practice that he's had and did the right thing. Hurley continued to try to do the right thing that day as he moved to disarm the gunman who was still alive and lying on the ground with his AR-15 nearby. According to investigative documents, the three Arvada cops say that they stayed inside because they worried even the door itself wouldn't stop around from an AR-15. Even though Hurley didn't look anything like the suspect description, they told investigators in an interview later that they couldn't tell if he was a possible second shooter. At the time, they had no idea one of their own, Officer Gordon Beasley, had just been killed two minutes earlier. Siddhartha Rathod, the attorney representing Hurley's family, said, quote, That's the information that Arvada did not want the public to know. The officers hid while Johnny did what they were trained to do, that the officers refused to go outside. He said, These are three officers with bulletproof vests on, and they refused to open the door and go and engage the shooter. According to court filings, for 11 seconds, the officers watched Hurley from behind as he attempted to remove the magazine from the shooter's rifle. Without announcing they were the police or asking him to drop the weapon, Arvada officer Craig Brownlow opened the substation door and took aim at Hurley from behind, hitting him in his pelvis and killing him. If the cops would have at least given him a warning and an opportunity to comply, John Hurley would probably still be alive today. Hey, what's up guys? Johnny from We Are Change Colorado. Hey, uh, just want to let you know that uh, even you can make a difference. Don't be fooled by the immensity of the issues that we face today. You are making a difference by standing up and using your voice. Every June 21st, remember the heroism of John Hurley and the cowardice of the Arvada Police Department. As we learned in Uvalde, cops aren't really heroes. They're glorified welfare recipients with badges, guns, fragile egos, and narcissistic personality disorders who want the public to think more of the Thin Blue Line gang than is warranted by their overbearing tyrannical attitudes and cowardly actions. I was always impressed with uh, how Johnny treated everybody. I did. There we go. There we oh, go. wear that go. one proudly. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. Which side are you on? You like freedom? I like freedom. Yeah, I know so. It's one of my favorite things. We're out here just uh, giving clothes away. We've been out here for about half an hour. Gave away tons of stuff. Shirts, pants, bras, hats, coats, shoes. And uh, we just want to give back some love to the community. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all action, baby. Street action. Rest in peace, John Hurley. You're a real hero.
Take a second to leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know, and I'll see you in the next video.